of having been made an, an honorary woman. Um, <laughs> but I rather, I, but, but, but given give the illustrious example that I'm following, I rather think not. Uh, but still, I would like to welcome you all here and say that though, and I must say that it proved to be for me, uh, one of the most challenging and enjoyable and educative experiences that I have ever had. Uh, it was not only a privilege to be able to work on the conference itself and the important issues that we were dealing with there, uh, but I think that it was a remarkable experience to work with a woman of such capacity uh, and dedication and intelligence and real political skill uh, as Maureen Reagan. So I would like to you know there were a lot of people who, there are a lot of people who say uh, about the UN and about our participation in it uh, that there's really not very much we can do. And I suppose that if I took that sort of an attitude uh, coming into the job that I now uh, have, I wouldn't really have very much to do in it, except I suppose to preside over the slow deterioration. It proved to me that if you have a dedicated leadership and real skill, and if you are willing to work at it in an organized fashion, uh, we can overcome the greatest of odds in order to achieve a success that was a success, I think, not only for the United States, uh, but for all uh, the men and women who participated in the conference in Nairobi, and most importantly, for all of those who will participate in the benefits that can be brought from such cooperation in the pursuit uh, of equality and human dignity for all people and for women in particular. I think for all of us, uh, of sometimes great difficulty and sometimes great challenges, there were times, I suppose, when most of us uh, would have been willing to, and she was going to make it a success, and that's exactly what she did. Uh, so I would like to say that the work that we have done in bringing you all here this evening is just the very slightest, the very slightest. Of it. Uh, finally, I would like to say a few words about our other honored guest this evening. Now this is an honored guest about whom I can say quite truly that without him I certainly would not be here. <laughs> but, but the excited leadership that he provides. Uh, I think I certainly had the experience of that firsthand, working as I do now in my capacity as Assistant Secretary, uh, had the ability to experience that we undertake in the UN system uh, are a clear indication that whatever the critics may say and whatever others may say, uh, we are dealing with a... Now, Maureen, we all love you. That's why we're here. And, and you all know when Maureen gives you the large hello, boy, it's terrific. It's, <laughs> it's just wonderful. And I want to give you a little personal incident because first time I met Maureen, I was the Secretary of the Treasury. And the President of the United States said to me one day, why don't you go down to Austin, Texas, and other cabinet members will go other places. And engage in the registration process. It'll be good for the political system. So down I went to Austin, Texas, where a local Texan was to be my partner in registration. And guess who it turned out to be? Maureen Reagan. <laughs> and did we have fun. She led me around from doorbell to doorbell, and we announced <laughs> ourselves and told them about the election and tried to get them to register if they were Republicans. And if we found out they weren't, we made a hasty retreat, but we did all right. <laughs> but I am here to tell you that no one is better qualified than Maureen Reagan to represent this country at the UN Commission on the Status of Women. And I'm really happy to be here and to honor her. Most of you are familiar with Maureen's great performance as head of our delegation to the UN Women's Conference in Nairobi last summer. That brilliant effort came as no surprise. She has a long and distinguished record speaking out to the American public on women's issues. I think sometimes she even speaks out to her father on women's <laughs> issues. She's been active in Republican women's issues as founder and present chairman of the newly created GOP Women's Political Action League and as special consultant for women's issues to the Republican National Chairman. As head of our Nairobi delegation at the conferences leading up to the one in Nairobi, Maureen excelled at multilateral diplomacy. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Again, this was not surprising given Maureen's extensive worldwide travel on behalf of American export trade. 
As anyone who has worked with her knows, she is a determined champion of the causes in which she believes. She has devoted years of service to the Arthritis Foundation, on whose behalf she's hosted many telethons and major fundraising events. Maureen has already been hard at work in New York during the recently concluded UN General Assembly debate on women's issues. Her job there was the difficult one of carrying forward the work she began last summer to encourage the Women's Commission to follow through on the forward-looking strategies document adopted by the Nairobi Conference. This will be our chief goal as our representative to the Commission. She will have responsibility for representing our views and interests on women's issues at its meetings. In fact, she will be off to Vienna to head our delegation to the upcoming Commission meeting on February 24th. With Marine's efforts, we look forward to seeing the Commission strengthened so that it becomes a more effective part of the UN system and implementing and in implementing the Nairobi document. I know that Marine and Alan Keyes have formed a great partnership. Their teamwork will continue to build for the United States a strong record on women's issues in the United Nations. They are both interested in the same thing concrete action to promote worldwide equality of men and women, as well as women's rights in the political, economic, social, and educational fields. So we're all here today to honor you, Maureen, and to endorse that goal. And I want you to know how personally gratified I am at your success, and that I look forward to hearing great things about you in the future. Now, no gathering of this kind is complete without a real surprise. And I think that you deserve a surprise. And you stood patiently in the receiving line. This great multitude came by. However, somebody who didn't come by is anxious to be here tonight. And if you will make way, I think Maureen's husband will enter over here <laughs> and give you the surprise of the evening. I know it, but here he comes, I think. <laughs> and now if that isn't a if that isn't a big enough surprise, Maureen, we've got another one for you. Quiet, please. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Mrs. Reagan. thank Secretary Schultz and Assistant Secretary Keyes for hosting this reception and all of you for coming by this evening and I can't tell you how much it fun it is to spring this little surprise on Maureen. <laughs> Some of you may think it a little unfair to catch her off guard like this but let me assure you I'm only returning a favor she's been doing for me all my life. <laughs> uh, uh, the truth is Maureen's been surprising me and making me very proud for a very long time. If you just let me tell this one little story, I think all of you know that when a candidate for president gets the required number of votes at a political convention, it's traditional for the press and the cameras to come bursting into his hotel room for pictures of the family celebrating. Well, back in 1980, when we were in that gigantic Renaissance Center in Detroit, I noticed just before the magic moment that everybody in the Reagan clan was there except Maureen. And naturally, with only a few minutes to go, I started asking everyone and say, where's Maureen, where's Maureen? And I could already hear some commentators saying, oh yeah, that's this fellow who just been nominated to run for the most powerful post in the free world. He can't even find his own daughter. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and then sure enough, it hit me and everyone else in the room. And only a few seconds later, there was confirmation right there on the television set in front of us. 
Maureen wasn't there because she had duties to perform as an alternate delegate and leader in the California delegation, and one of which, come to think of it, was voting for me. <laughs> now, I hadn't been in politics as long as some people, but I did know that that was the wrong moment to start taking anything for granted. So as I listened to Maureen on television, just this once, I was glad she was, I was glad she was on the floor and not with us. And there's a little sequel to this. Last year, I kept seeing in the press all those reports about the UN conference wrapping up the decade of women. I think some of you remember that there was a good deal of speculation that the whole conference was going to become politicized. Matters a, a propaganda exercise on extraneous matters uh, rather than a serious exchange on the issues that uniquely affect women. And there was some talk, too, about how the American delegation, which Maureen was heading, was going to be outsmarted, outmaneuvered, and probably embarrassed by all of this. And you know, every time I read one of those reports, I got this big Cheshire cat-like grin. Because I was thinking to myself, somebody out there sure doesn't know my daughter. <laughs> well, those of us here today do know Maureen. At State, you know her by the wonderful job she did do in Nairobi. You know how effectively she worked to get agreement on the consensus document that would make the conference the success that it was and bring the American delegation the credit it deserved. And you know, too, that she'll do a fine job as our representative to the UN Commission on the Status of Women. And of course, for Nancy and me, Maureen is someone we love dearly, and yet someone whom we also recognize as the extraordinary individual that she is. And that isn't all that easy. As I said, it's always a little bit of a surprise for a father, just as it was that night in Detroit, to realize that that's your daughter up there on the TV screen, not only a grown woman, I'm not that old yet, but, um, but a, a leader, a mover, someone who's making the world a whole lot better place to live. But all these things Maureen is, and that's why Nancy and I and all of you love her for it. So I want to thank Maureen today as her father for making me so proud of her on this occasion and so many others, but also as her president, I want to thank her on behalf of the American people for distinguished service to her country and the cause of human freedom, freedom and dignity. I don't want to know. <laughs> and, um, and I get a copy of their schedule. And this wasn't on it, Fred Ryan. <laughs> I mean, I, I've heard of, of pulling off one surprise in a week, but this lady has succeeded in pulling off at least two that I know of in the last week. Oh, my goodness gracious. Well, thank you. And thank you, Alan, for for having us all here and for giving this party. And Mr. Secretary, I, I do appreciate it. Little did I know when I had you tromping the turf in Austin that someday I would work for you. I know you prayed that day would never come. <laughs> <laughs> and I look out here and I, I see so many familiar faces and certainly all of our, of our delegates from Nairobi. And um, I, when I travel around the country and, and I tell people about what happened there and what we did, the one thing that I always tell them is that if sometime they have a chance to meet any one of you individually, that they should give you a big hug and a kiss and tell you thank you because you are my best friends for my whole life, I promise, <laughs> to the delegation. <laughs> what we did in Nairobi, um, was important to all the people of the world, women and men, because we, we build a platform on which the spotlight shines on the unique concerns of women, 
the dreams and the goals and the ambitions of all women in the world. And the things that we have in common are much greater than the things that divide us. And now we have to go to Vienna and begin the process of implementing the forward-looking strategies and those dreams and goals and ambitions. And we will do that. I can't guarantee that it will be over in the first 30 days. I can guarantee I will live to see it. And so will all of you. And we are, we are determined that what happened in Nairobi will not end in Nairobi. And the feeling and the spirit that all of us and those of you here tonight from the diplomatic community know that incredible spirit that we all feel and that we, this kinship that, that we developed. And we are determined um, to have successful years in the future to match our successful year of 1985. Thank you all very much for coming, all of you. <laughs> and it really was a huge surprise. And then are we even now? <laughs> Well, I tell you what, I'll start adding mine up again and then we'll see what happens next. But thank you all and I love every one of you. Thank you. Well, I would like to add my thanks to all of you to coming, Mr. President, Mrs. Reagan, Mr. Secretary. Uh, and I would especially like to thank Maureen for being the person who can inspire this great affection and admiration in all of us. Uh, and I would invite you, Mr. President, to meet some of our guests if you have time. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Good evening.